So recently I made templates, well, not so recently. So in the last video I talked about the cage plates and how I wanted to tie the cage into the body of the truck, made templates, and after that I drew it up in Fusion to send it off and have it cut from Sin Cut Sin. Those came in. So I'm gonna take the pilot hole that I put in here, cause at the time I didn't know the bolt diameter for the body mounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill these out to a 7 16 which is the closest thing I have in a rotor brooch to these. And we'll get these mocked up inside the truck and start laying out the main hoop. Also, my stock axle has four link bracketry that I made by hand and then bought a coal over bracket like an adjustable perch and welded to the back of it. I wanted to keep everything the same geometry on the new axle so I can just bolt it in. And I wanted everything to line up with minimal changes and adjustments. So I redrew the same bracketry in Fusion and went ahead and added the coilover perch on it so it's all one piece. So I had it cut out of this cheaper material because of it being the first time I've done a keyway, I wanted to make sure it worked. Uh, keyway works good, but I didn't think about rounding off the one side like I did before. And now the arch doesn't hit like this and I expected. I just got a little off on that. So I'll get this adjusted. I'll get the file sent off and recut out of metal this time. Because if I had cut this out of metal and had that little mishap, I'd have been pretty pissed off. So with the holes drilled, now I can take the bolt. I'll end up getting extended ones to make up the difference for how much higher the bolt is, but I'll do some measuring for that later. But now I have a, an official spot for this to hit. The back one too. Let's see the hole line up. But I need to put a little break here, and I don't really have a good way to do that here at home yet until I finish up another project, but we'll get that figured out. So the backbone to every cage is always going to be the main hoop or the, the B-pillar hoop. Some people call it different things. Um, so that's where I'm going to start with mine. I just need to come in here and figure out the parameters of what I'm working with as far as uh, from the floor to the roof, overall width of the widest point where I'll put the, the bins coming down, figure out where the harness bar needs to go or if it can go in the bins, which I prefer to do it that way. Roof has a little bit of a radius, so I'm going to see if it makes sense to put a slight bend in the center to try and compensate aesthetically for that. I feel like I can push it up high enough that it won't really make a difference because of trying to get exits out here for the rear supports to go down to the frame. I think it'll be up high enough that it won't look funny at the window because that's my biggest concern, even though that's all just purely looks. Since I'm limited on options as far as running rear supports out the back like in a, a coupe or a sedan like a full car uh i want to put as much bracing in here as i can so instead of just the standard diagonal like most cars would run i'm going to do a full x in it so it'll be from upper corner to opposing lower and vice versa so let me get some measurements of where the tubes need to hit i'll get the seat in here see where I'll, the harness bar needs to hit versus the seat because they're going to be basically against each other, so I don't get that normal spacing and gap like I would in a in a car. So I'll work around that, and we'll go to the next step and start laying it on the floor. All right, so here's a quick rundown on what goes through my head and my process. So initially, I just drew the rough shape of what I thought the cage would look like. So the first thing I do is go for overall height. So I'm measuring from the sheet metal. Uh, I'll have to take a little bit off for the plate, but I'd rather have to take some off than add on. 
I come in here, figure out where I wanted the tube height wise, which was right here, which is what this mark is. So from here down, that's where we got the measurement 42 to the bottom of the tube. If you get in a situation where you're measuring from the bottom in one area and like here, I do the top of the harness, always write that down for clarification. So I've got bottom for this one. And then over here, it says to the top. So that way I don't end up here and end up in the entire tube too short or too high. And then if that's too high, I'll bring it down, it messes this up or the tube. So once I get the main height for that, I went for the width. I wanted to know the maximum amount to come in for the bend through here. I gave myself an inch of clearance on either side, which ended up giving me 51 outside to outside. And then based on where the seat sat, I wanted the harness bar to be the top of it, even with this little kick out. I also like the fact that it'll be below the window so you don't see the entire bar. And then the overall where it hits on this plate versus where that plate will be. And it's actually also 51 top and bottom. So now that I know the width at the shoulder bar bend and at the mounting point at the bottom is the same width, that means I know this section of bar is at 90 degrees. And I know up here, this will be 90 degrees to that. So that makes the math real easy. From 90 here to make the plane match the edge of the window here, that ended up being 17 and a half degrees. And basic math makes the rest of it right here, 72 and a half. The biggest thing with knowing where the bends are gonna start, I always go from center and bend out. So where my first bend hits is crucial because if it's too wide, it'll start curving in down where this section would be. If I do it too soon, then I'm coming down too quick. So what I always do is I go from center point, make a reference, and then on my template tube that I always keep around, I have the bend start scribed in it. So I always know where it's at. Hold it up here, figure out in and out where I want it. And then all you do is measure from scribe point to center mark. And then that gives me a bend start, which is 16 inches from center to bend start. Bend that 72 and a half degrees, come down. Then I'll go from that point and bend down 17 and a half degrees, which should make these two parallel to each other. So now that I got everything laid out on the ground, which is traditionally how I do it, it's a little old school, but it's always done me really well. Since I started off at 42 inches from floor to the bottom of the tube for the hoop, I went ahead and added inch and a half, which is the diameter of the tube I'm using to get me to 43 and a half and ran my line across for my overall height. That lets me keep working on the outer perimeter of the main hoop all the way around. And I always put reference arrows. That way I know which side I'm measuring to for which piece. Like now I'm measuring off the top of the tube instead of the bottom. Harness bar I have, I know this is where the top of the tube will be. So the tube will sit down here versus up here. So once I got the height figured out, I then go to center so I can work my way side to side and then the templates I use, I always keep a piece of tube that's the exact one of what I'm going to be building with. Have the bend start, and then on the straight before that, if you line the profiles up, that'll give you an accurate representation of where the tube's going to come. And then based on my 17 and a half that I knew I needed here to come up and fit the window reveal, my guess was a little shy. So I can take my tube, and as long as I keep the top edge of the tube parallel to the tape, I know that all I'm doing is going wider instead of higher. I make my new reference until it comes around and touches. And right when I know it's touching, I now know the profile of that bend will follow this one down through this profile when I actually bend it. So then I came back up here, remarked my new bend start. It's now 16 and three quarters. So it's three quarter per side wider than I thought it would be. So then I go back to the truck and I go from the center line, take my tube and make sure I have the clearance in here to do what I want, make sure it's not too wide. Confirm that. I know that's good here to match where I need down here. And then same thing to get this one when you have just a pointed line. And then once that touches out here, that gives you your new bend start to go from this way, that way. So rough measurement told me that from 
center of the roof down one side was about five and a half feet. If I give myself some wiggle room down here. So I'm gonna call 11 feet, find center, and then that's where I'll start doing the bins. All right, so I had a piece on my shelf that was 11 foot, four and a half. And I don't see the point in cutting it off to make it 11 feet, just to measure it and then cut more off again later. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. So at 11 foot, four and a half, that makes it 136 and a half inches, which split for center line would be 68 and a quarter. And then I usually like to measure both ways just to double check my measurement. Yep. So then I know based on the layout, 16 and three quarter is gonna be our bend start. So I like to burn an inch, so I'll go 17 and three quarter. That'll be my first bend start. 17, burn an inch. So once I get this all bent up, I can throw it back onto my tape reference here on the floor, and that'll end up telling me where my bend start is for the second bends. All right, so my first bend again is 72 and a half degrees. I'll come in, load the tube. I'll go to my bend start, which I showed how I set these in a previous video. I'll turn the ram on. Once it starts getting tension on it, I'll come and adjust this and set the wire. I don't put a lot of stock in these. This is usually a ballpark thing for me, so I do it a little different for like knowing specifically where I'm at. So the way I do my bend angles on these, instead of the dial indicator or whatever you want to call it that comes with them, I use a digital protractor laid out flat on a straight edge, flat table, whatever, zero. I pre-bend it to 72 and a half, which is the bend I know I want. The only problem I've had with one this size, it barely gets enough flat before you can really measure the angle and it gets kind of obnoxious to hold. So just to make it sit a little flatter. I have this longer piece of, two pieces of carbon fiber with a bolt. Set it up. Now go ahead and match the angle so I know this is 72 and a half. Whenever I come in to do my first bend, I have a lot more flat surface area to make sure I'm true and not kind of tweaked a little bit. It's not completely necessary, but it's just kind of the way I like to do it. All right, so I've got my bend start set in there. You can see the line versus the little notch that I have on the die itself. Set that so it's snug. Then I'll start the bend. I'll use my carbon protractor extender thing. I'll eyeball this as I'm watching the number here to know when I'm getting close. And then once I get to a certain point where I think that's it, I'll pull it out, verify it. The way I keep track of my bends to make sure they're precise from one to the next, I have a reference marked to this machined edge of the ram. I always measure off face to that spot on the ram on this really shitty tape measure. All right, so I got the first bin done. I can verify it with my gauge. It's really hard to hold with one hand, but you get the idea. 
So now that I'm happy with this, I know the last measurement that I took on the ram here was 11 inches. I had to sneak up on it a little bit due to the spring back of the steel. The bigger the bend, the more spring backs. I'll end up going a little past where I actually want to be. And then I check the ram so I have a reference. I take the tension off so all the spring back comes out and it's sitting neutral, I guess you could say. And then I check the reveals again. If it's still a little out, whatever my number was here, I come just a little bit more, check it again. And then I sneak up on it, ended up at 11. I'm happy with where this sits versus this thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bend the other one and then we'll start on the secondaries down here. So basically all I do is I hold this up with the reveal of the tube going in this direction. And then I watch as the tube comes around here. And as it starts to come in, I start watching for the reveal to match up on this plane as well. So now that I got my first two done, I'm gonna lay it back down in my template that I put on the ground and get my next bins. So I line my center line back up, reveals the same with the tape. Come around here. Bin looks pretty good to this one. It's a smidge off, but I can live with that. So I come in, look at it dead from the top. That's my new bin start for the one down. And then I'll just take the tube, flip it, mark it again on this side, check the measurement just to be safe, and then do it again. So I know my next angle is 17 and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset my angle finder. Get it flat, zero again. And I'll just go to 17 and a half. So now I'll go ahead and match my carbon piece to this. And since it's such a shallow angle, I'll pretty much immediately lay it up there and start watching the angle and pulling my measurement off the ram to duplicate. It's also worth noting the way that I get this to make sure it's flat all the way across. Same thing as I just match the reveal of the edge of the tube to the reveal of the actual die. So I'll put enough tension on this to where I can pick this up, it'll hold its own weight, but I can kind of manhandle it to make sure I like how even they look in relation to each other, and then I'll continue with the bend. So that's all the bins for the main hoop. I'm pretty happy with the reveal. Everything lines up the way it should. There's minor deflection, but there'll be so much leverage that I have down here when it actually comes time to weld it in the truck that I can bend and pull these a pretty substantial amount. So I'm not worried about that little bit that it's off. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some marks where the ground line is. I'll get that cut off in the bandsaw and we'll test fit it. So I was kind of hoping I could get away with not doing it, but I am going to have to clearance this inner structure just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so there's the first real test fit. I'm actually really happy with it. it tucks up in here real nice. I got that inner structure out of the way. It doesn't really even stick out much further than the old sheet metal did, which is pretty much what I was planning on, about a quarter inch difference. I'll probably end up cutting off this whole piece all together because it's not held up on this side. It just braced down to here. But once all the pieces are done this way, I'll end up 
probably putting dimple die plates to tie it back in. That way it puts some of the structure back in the sheet metal and ties it to the cage. But overall, I'm really happy with that for a first go. Probably go ahead and make this harness bar real quick so I can see that too before I call it a day. So inside measurement for the harness bar is 48 and a quarter from one side to the other on the inside. I wanted to add half of the tube diameter to each side to give me enough room for the notch. So I did inch and a half overall, which is tube size. So overall now I have 49 and three quarter inch piece. Mark three quarters in on the ends for the notch. And now I'm gonna notch it. That's pretty much it. I'm super stoked with how tight that fit and how everything looks. And then next time I'll start coming in here, I'll work out the X's for the brace. All right, so that's pretty much my whole process for building a main hoop. Next time I'll do some more, come in and do the X's, mess with the plates, maybe deal with the pillar bars. So here we get.